Well, well, well. If it isn't my <laughs> favorite audience, the audience of Avatar, the podcast. Hey, everyone. Guess who's back? Guess who's back from a little bit of a break to bring to you. No, not book three, episode one, The Awakening, but a little bit of content that maybe some of our Netflix viewers haven't quite seen yet or heard of yet. Surprise. Yes, we're talking about this small little bit of an episode that's called Escape from the Spirit World, or as we like to call it, The Lost Episode. Bum, bum, bum. Cue the lightning and the fireworks and all the loud noises that happen in the <laughs> sky, I guess. <laughs> That's right. And before we dive into Escape from the Spirit World, we got a couple of things that we want to talk about. The first one being what I think is the most exciting one. So it might kind of overshadow literally everything else we want to say. But those of you might remember us teasing some new content that's going to replace ang mail and we're going to officially give you the details right now i'm so excited yes after much planning and much deliberation planning. Yes. we've landed on the final version yes this is going to be a live show once a month over at twitch.tv slash the geek generation because everyone knows that Avatar the Podcast is a part of the Geek Generation Network. The name is going to be Avatar, which I think is really funny. <laughs> I will say right now, mo all of the credit, I almost said yes. most, but really all of the credit yes. goes to Greg for that name. And I do love it. I think it's exactly what it sounds like. We're going to be sitting down and talking Avatar. Can I make a confession to you? What's that? I did not come up with that name. Wait, where'd you get it? Uh, the real credit goes to Captain Howdy. Who, oh, really? When we started Avatar the Podcast, he yelled, I think it might have been on our private secret Discord. He yelled, if it's not called Avatar, I'm not listening. <laughs> oh, my God, you're right. And I think it was after we released a couple episodes. So it was like, well, we can't uh -huh. do it now, Cap. Too late. But what we can do is I can say it's my name and then rebrand it as a completely <laughs> different show, which is which is fine. So that's the name Avatar. It is going to be a monthly show. As I said, it's going to be at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time ish. Everyone knows how Twitch works. It's like 701, 702, mm -hmm. 659. It'll be around that time slot. And it'll give everyone a couple of minutes to kind of come on in and get comfortable if they need it. The first episode is going to be on May 28th. That is not too far away. Add it to your calendars. Yes. And we've gone through a lot of the emails and we've decided that our first ever topic is going to be fan theories. That's going to be a beefy episode. I am so excited. A beefy excited. show. It is going to be an hour, so we will try our best to cap it at an hour, although we said that yep. the, the show was only going to be an hour an episode. And look what happens here. That doesn't. <laughs> we definitely go over that we sometimes. We definitely go over all the time. Also, for our European listeners, mm -hmm. our European friends, mm -hmm. we do plan on posting these live shows to our YouTube channel. That's so right. if you can't make it for the live show, totally fine. Yep. You can find that content over on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash avatar the podcast. That's right. That's right. So that's our first big announcement. Hopefully everyone can join us on the 28th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I don't think we gave them the, the link yet. Where, I did. where did they go to? I already said it, but I'll say it again. It's worth repeating. You could say it. No, I've already said it. You say it now. <laughs> Maybe I just blacked out. I don't remember you <laughs> saying twitch.tv slash the geek generation. That's right. And again, twitch.tv slash the geek generation, May 28th, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or the next day on YouTube, you know, whichever, whichever. But <laughs> if you watch it after the fact, you might not get to participate in the chat. Sometimes we read chat. Sometimes we don't. We, I mean, it's our first episode. Give us a break. We'll figure it out. Brings us <laughs> to our second point, and this is a little, this is a little embarrassing. On the, I think it was the last episode that we released, or the second to last, I don't remember which one. We might have said something along the line, along, along, 
<laughs> oh, like, wow. That's a hidden pun. Along the lines of Long Fang not being any sort of bender and just being like a muggle or a normal human being, right? Well, we've been corrected. We were definitely wrong about that. Turns out Greg and I were uh, victims of the Mandela effect yes. and completely misremembered mm -hmm. that episode where Long Fang bended. Both of us, we talked about this and both of us could have sworn it was a Dai Li agent who knocked Jet out with a rock. Yes. But no, it was in fact Long Fang. Long Fang is an earthbender. That's right. And that was pointed out to me at first on my own Twitch stream when I was playing Alan Wake. Ouch. New friend uh, Legic. Kind of actually, he didn't say it on stream, but he messaged me, he DM me afterwards. He's like, Hey, just so you know. And I was like, ah. Hey, buddy. This is what really happened. He messaged me at like four, and I was like, Uh, I went and checked the episode and watched it and did not find that daily agent that I thought was in there. And I was like, Oh, God, you're right. You're so right. <laughs> So our apologies for that, but we want to make sure that we're being honest with everyone and not glossing over any mistakes that we made. That doesn't yes. mean point them all out to us, but still, you know. The big ones. The big you know? ones. Like Keep us honest. Misremembering that someone can actually earthbend and killed a major secondary character. Yep. Like that. that's worth pointing out. Okay. Now we've gotten the embarrassing stuff out of the way. <laughs> we want to talk about our third point, which is a new Avatar podcast coming out which is called Avatar Braving the Elements. Yes, this is huge it's news. so big. Why don't you tell them a little bit about it? Yes. Yeah, so the other day, Nickelodeon announced that they are launching a 40-episode podcast called Avatar Braving the Elements. Mm -hmm. It's going to premiere Tuesday, June 22nd, 2021. And guess who the hosts are? Uh, not me and you. Sadly, no. <laughs> <laughs> not us. That was not, not going to be some big reveal. No. Um, the hosts are actually the voice actors for Cora and Prince Zuko, our very own Janet Varney and Dante mm. Bosco. Yes. So excited. So, so excited. You couldn't pick a better duo to do that podcast. Unless, Honestly, yes. Unless. <laughs> <laughs> unless i'm not gonna say it, me relax my ego is in check kind of this episode unless we're talking about may whitman and jack decena i would love Absolutely. to see that or decena i always say miss say his name but i would love to see Sokka and katara have their own or me <gasps> jk simmons he wouldn't do it but still because you'll find out when we get to cora where jk simmons fits into it yeah but still yeah so it's super exciting i do want to also point out that every time we here at Avatar the Podcast take a break, some major announcement in the Avatar universe happens. It's uncanny. It's ridiculous. For those of you keeping score at home, when we took our first break, they announced it was like the rise and fall of the Avatar Netflix stuff. Mm -hmm, the live action show. Yep. And all of its drama. And when we took the second break, which was like the hidden break, I call it, because we record everything ahead of time. So a lot of people didn't know we were on break. They announced Avatar Studios. Mm -hmm. And now, as we're coming back from a break, arguably they announced it when we're still on break, they have Avatar braving the elements. So what will happen when we break after book three? I don't know. At this point, I expect big news every Huge. time we take a break after every season yes. of the podcast. Yes. So, you know, Keep it coming, Nickelodeon. Yeah. Give us some exciting things to know. It's so, so good. And the third thing, in this, which is the second to last thing, there's a lot of things today. There's a lot of housekeeping. <laughs> a lot of episode. news. A lot of news. We told everyone all about our Patreon. We've been mm -hmm. saying it for, I can't remember how many episodes. We are ready to announce the winning nation for the first round of the 100 year war or maybe the first battle would be more accurate to say for the vision that yeah, we wanted the, the image the last we wanted couple paint. weeks we were talking about who was currently winning this is going to be officially the first battle yes yes the first battle goes to the fire nation by dun, one dun, dun. one measly amazing beautiful vote that kills me. It's like who my, was who was closely in second, Greg? Tell us. Earth, it was the it was the Earth Kingdom. It was a tie between the Earth Kingdom and the Water Tribe. Oh. So either of them could have taken it, but the Fire Nation, they were winning when it began. 
and they continue to win after the first battle. I am shocked by that. Yeah, me too. So we will tell you next month if this keeps up or if the tides of war change. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Speaking of Patreon, our fourth and final announcement is the official reveal of that exclusive content that you will be getting if you are a patron of the $5 tier or higher. And that Patreon is Patreon exclusive content. Patreon exclusive content. We are going to be releasing. Not only are you going to get the doodle pages, which we're behind on, but we will get that out. Not yep. only are you going to get me and Acorn messaging you, telling you how much we love you and appreciate you. And blog posts and thoughts. But you're also going to get a secret podcast. Secret podcast. Secret podcast. Just for patrons. <laughs> secret, 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 secret podcast. Secret podcast. Uh, yes. Yeah, so I desperately want to turn the theme song into that. Like we're yes. going to, we're going to work on that. We'll work on that. It might get worse. It might get better. I feel like everyone <laughs> wants it to get worse. Yeah. It's called the secret podcast. And what we're going to do is we are going to ask our patrons. I'm going to roll a D10 or however, you know, whatever I need to roll a ra an RNG random number generator. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to reach out to that number correlating to that patron. And they are going to choose a random tertiary character in the background, not even tertiary at that point, like a random no name, maybe even no line character that's just yep. there in the scene. Any episode, any season, anyone in the background that you want. I will put a stipulation that just not from Korra until we hit Korra. Yes. And that's mainly because we haven't finished Korra yet. So I, well, we also don't want any potential spoilers. But right now, yep. anything in Avatar The Last Airbender any episode, it doesn't matter. Pick a character in the background. What are we going to do, Greg? Oh, we're going to make... With that character. Tell us more. We're going to make... Acorn and I each are going to make up a backstory for that character. And yep. we're going to record not only that person's name, the background, maybe some likes and dislikes. You know what? Let's find one of those character sheets that they do in uh, creative writing. Oh, 100%. And we'll, yes. We'll figure out favorite books like the whole deal like we'll we'll go crazy <laughs> with it right starting us off i am actually going to pick the first character just to kind of get the ball rolling so everyone kind of expect mm -hmm. what to do i found this character in season three episode one so that will be the next episode that is released uh-huh and i'm next gonna week's episode next week's episode i almost messaged it to legic oops i'm gonna message it to acorn right now i haven't seen yet i'm so seen. excited before we sat down to record, Greg said, Acorn, I found our first found secret it. podcast character. And he told me he wasn't going to show me until now. So it's you true. are getting live Acorn reaction. It's true. This character is found at six minutes, 21 seconds into the episode. And I message it to you right now. <laughs> it is the gentleman who is standing next to Hope. What? Covering his eyes as the Fire Nation takes over. That's hilarious. This okay. is who our first ever secret podcast is going to revolve around. I am oh my so God. excited. When I was watching really that episode. I'm really excited too. That's a great pick. It was the third time I watched the episode and I saw that face and I was like, he's the one. He's wonderful. <laughs> he is perfect in every way. I love that. Okay. I'm really excited to come up with this guy's backstory. Yes, me too. I have an His idea. full profile. Oh, it's going to be so good. Okay. Here's the interesting thing though. Yeah. We came up with this idea and only came up with the basics on, on how we would run this, how we would pick the characters, what mm -hmm. we would say about them. We don't know yet how alike our minds are going to be. I'm curious to see what you come up with and I if that's too. going to gel with what I'm thinking and how much we're going to bicker back and forth about it. It's going to be fun. It's going to be so much fun. So you will all have that to look forward to. And by you all, I mean all of our wonderful, beautiful patrons over we at so patreon.com slash avatar the podcast. And yes, thank you so, so much. Not only are we, and I, I say this with every, every single time someone, we get a new patron or someone messages us on there. Not only are we so happy that you listen to our little podcast, but like that you decided to support us in this way as well mm -hmm. just makes life so much easier and, and so much better. Like we're able to actually pay our editor, which is really good. So we're super, super grateful. It really is the cherry on top. It is. Yeah. We want to just keep on giving you all like more and more stuff. So yep. hopefully this is great and you all enjoy it. 
hopefully you're excited about the exclusive Patreon content. Yes, hopefully. Otherwise, I'm going to cry. <laughs> we got to do something about the Fire Nation winning the 100-year war, though. I mean, come yes. on. Yes, we do. I feel like we do. They kind of are winning a 100-year war already, and it's not super great. <laughs> We're about to go into season three and we know how that starts. Yeah. So not all that. Okay. Well, anyways, now that we've gotten all the announcements out of the way, let's talk about escape from the spirit world. Yes, please. I'm so excited about this. For anyone who doesn't know about this, this originally was a canonical online game that was meant to explain the events between book two and book three. If you want to find this without needing to play it, because I feel like if you're like me, you're just going to, it was a trivia game or matching thing. So you just press buttons mm-hmm. until it all worked. I found this originally at the end of my book two Blu-ray set, which was just oh, a nice. little, little animatic. You can also find it on YouTube. I found it within three seconds on YouTube. It's definitely on there in multiple, <laughs> multiple quality arrangements, <laughs> let's say. But yes, we join Aang after he was struck by lightning waking up disoriented and he doesn't know where he is suddenly the spirit of princess yue appears and tells the young airbender that he is in the spirit world she continues and tells ang that his spirit has been injured and if he doesn't act quickly he will lose his connection to his past lives forever and the avatar cycle will end in order to complete this task ang must find his four past lives and reconnect with them I love this concept. Just yes. But like we just said, this happens in between the final episode of book two and the first episode of book three. In the time where Aang has passed out after being struck by lightning by Azula. I love that they did this. I was telling Greg before, and I will probably say this many more times, I need more information about the past avatars. And this gives me just a little taste yes. of who they were, what kind of personalities they had. And so I am all about this kind of content. I love that they did this. What's very interesting too is this is not voice acted. It's very like, it's like an animatic, let's say. Yeah. It's a motion comic. But Mm -hmm. I can hear, when I was watching this, I could hear the voices coming through. Yes, me too. Which I think shows how good the writing is that you can like read what Aang is supposed to be saying and hear that voice actor. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. Totally. Yeah, me too. And I vaguely remember playing this on the Nickelodeon website when yeah. Avatar was originally airing very, very vaguely. Yeah. But I was reading that when this came out, the original structure of the game was that after Aang meets Ko, the player needed codes to progress. And the codes were originally collected while watching the Nickelodeon Saturday programs. Mm. Later, they advertised that in addition to getting the codes from the Saturday shows, you could also find them on different Nickelodeon websites. I kind of got the feeling it was more like it was like a scavenger hunt. Yeah. Yeah, Or like an egg hunt where you had to go around and like find the codes. You can beat this game. And it was just a really cool marketing project. Oh, yeah. And pretty low, not low effort, but low budget for for them, right? They're like, all right, cool. Here's some more lore. If you want to watch or play this game. You can. If not, you don't need to. There's no, you're not going to miss anything necessarily Mm -hmm. other than that supplementary content. It's not like in six episodes, Aang's going to be like, that one time where I went to the spirit world and oh, you didn't play it too bad. You don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. The writers are very mindful of that. So that was awesome. Unsure of how to complete this, Aang asks Yue how to go about this task. But all she can tell him is that his past lives can be found in the spirit world and to be weary of Ko as he will try to steal his face and has allies throughout the spirit world that will attempt to trick Aang. Yue wishes Aang luck, and he finds himself in a new, fiery spirit world location. Aang calls out for Avatar Roku as a geyser goes off in the trees behind him. Aang continues to walk through the spirit world when suddenly a geyser goes off right in front of him, and Avatar Roku appears. Aang apologizes to his former self, and admits that he failed to master the Avatar state. Roku informs him that the Avatar state takes spiritual discipline and patience, and admits that he too had to learn this lesson the hard way. Roku shows Aang a memory of when he was learning to master the Avatar state from Fire Sage Kaja, which, if you didn't know, is Shayu's freaking grandfather. Shayu. Shayu. Remember Shayu? <laughs> I loved him so much. I believe he was uh, 
MVP of, the, think, of an episode at one point right. in time, right? Yes. And it, <laughs> I'm like 99% sure he was, but I'm 100% sure that we have fun saying his name every time. Oh, yeah. Can. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm actually 100% sure of both of those things. Yes. Okay. Well, good. <laughs> And for those who don't remember, Shayu is the name of the fire sage who betrayed his other fire sages to help right. Team Avatar yep. in Winter Solstice Part 2. Mm -hmm. That's right, yes. Roku recounts that he did not have the patience or discipline to clear his mind and ended up concentrating on his leg falling asleep or wondering what would be served for lunch that day. And this was, just so everyone knows, this was Roku's state of mind after five months of training. Yeah, that's real. He was still wandering mind. When Roku fails to willingly enter the Avatar state, he stands up and lashes out, which I just want to make a, a point here. I think I said at one point, we're talking about Avatar Roku. Mm -hmm. And for me, he felt kind of one dimensional. He was just like the wise and powerful Oz, essentially, right? Like there was nothing like to him. He was just there. And he was like the avatar that was showing Aang the ropes. Yep. So I really like that we get to see Roku in a different light here. Yes. And I believe I said this when you mentioned that during our record, that this is only the start. We are going to get so much more Roku content in yes. book three. You're going to be so happy. I'm so excited. I remember I was going through four. I think it was some of the Aang mail and I was going through just some episodes and I saw Roku in there. So I like quickly skipped past it, but I'm yeah. very excited. I'm very, very excited. He looked younger too, which makes me more excited. Oh yeah. That's the best part. During the winter solstice, Roku tries to use the power of the sun to enter and control the avatar state. Doing so appears to work for a moment, but then Roku is unable to control the power and he accidentally blows the top off of the fire temple on Crescent Island and finds himself stuck in the Avatar state. For those discerning listeners, if you think back during hmm. Winter Solstice Part 2, Avatar Roku, we talked about that. One of our fun facts was that day when Aang was at the temple wasn't the first time Roku destroyed the temple, and this is the first time. So we are seeing it back in history. We are seeing the start of Roku's relationship with this temple. I feel like Roku just doesn't like the temple. I feel like him, like, quote unquote, <laughs> losing control of the Avatar state is just a cover. He just didn't like the decor or something. Maybe some repressed yeah. aggression, some repressed something. feelings, you know. After five months of eating Komodo chicken, he's over it. He's done. done. He's like, let's wipe out this temple. No more Komodo chicken. No more. So yeah, Roku enters the Avatar state. He can't control it. And he admits that he could see his body, but he could not control it in any way, shape, or form. So it was very similar to when Aang was forced into the Avatar state by mm -hmm. General Howe. Yeah, exactly. What it reminds and it's me of. cute, too, because in this moment, in this game... Aang is watching the scene with the older spirit of Avatar Roku. And he's like, you did it. You mastered the Avatar state. And Roku's like, mm, not quite. Because yeah. I actually got stuck here. Yes. Fortunately, though, Fire Sage Kaja knew exactly how to break Roku out of the Avatar state and has a bit of a sense of humor about the whole thing. Kaja tells the younger Roku that they have a bit more training to do after Roku rebuilds the temple. So maybe that's why he's okay with breaking it the second time. He goes, you know what? I break it. I break it once. <laughs> I build it. I break it again because it's mine now, technically. No big deal. No big deal. Roku tells Aang that he sees his own impatience and the young airbender and assures Aang that he will master the Avatar state just as Roku did. As Roku flies away on Fang, he tells Aang to find Avatar Kyoshi in the place where Heibai sleeps. Uh, Heibai! Heibai! He's so cute. Already, you know, just to echo what you said before, I love this dipping of the toe into the characterization of these characters who've mm. been around for two seasons. Yeah. And we don't really know much about. Like, I love that they started with Roku. I mean, first of all, he's Aang's mentor. So, of course. Right. But Roku is who we see the most in the show. And so getting some backstory and understanding that he faced the same struggles that Aang did in Aang's journey just adds this bit of humanization that is so delightful and adds depth to the story. It really kind of makes you think as a kid, you always thought that adults are just adults. Like they were never yeah. kids once. I, I think like you might've known they were kids, but it didn't click necessarily. Mm -hmm. Like you maybe saw a picture of your parents or your uncle or your family member, something like that. And that's a very similar mentality to what I had watching this for the first time mm -hmm. where it's like, Oh yeah, Roku isn't, 
the all-powerful, amazing Avatar his whole life. He was at yeah. the end of it for sure, but he had to get there. He had a journey to go through on his own. And this Absolutely. is just a, a taste of it. And I love it. And that's this is what good supplementary content should be. 100%. Yeah. Couldn't have said it better myself, Greg. Yay! It had to happen sooner or later. Okay. <laughs> Moments later, Aang runs up to the bamboo snacking hey bye, happy to see his new friend again. After giving him a big old bear hug, <laughs> by the way, that was kind of a little bit of a pun. I hope you weren't too bamboozled oh by it. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. The puns Welcome have returned. Welcome back. Aang asks if he's seen the spirit of Avatar Kyoshi around. Aang hops on Heibai's back when they spot the former Avatar and catch up to her. Kyoshi almost immediately apologizes for the whole wrongfully accused of murder back in Chin Village thing, and <laughs> Aang immediately accepts the apology. Oh my gosh. Fun fact, this is displayed on the screen if no one has watched it, but I just want to say it right here. Something that I think you told me, but it didn't click in my head. Mm -hmm. Kyoshi lived to be 230 years old which makes her the oldest avatar in history. Oh, yeah. Kyoshi's a beast, man. I cannot nuts. wait for her books. It's nuts. And she like, oh, man, she was so powerful and so cool and so big, like physically large. Yeah, super tall, big feet. <laughs> so Huge good. personality. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kyoshi tells Aang that after Chin the Conqueror died, she helped the world live in balance. She accomplished a lot of good, but she also made some mistakes. And the biggest one was dealing with a peasant uprising in Ba Sing Se. Give me the lore. Give me the lore. Yes. Yeah. So she tells Aang of how the peasants felt that the Earth King's role was unnecessary and that he did not have their best interests at heart or their interests at all for that matter. Yeah. They ended up rioting and storming the upper ring, destroying priceless artifacts and buildings. Basically, anything that represented the quote unquote old government was destroyed. And that's when the Earth King summoned Kyoshi. This is the, for those of you keeping track at home, this Earth King that I'm talking about is the 46th Earth King and the current Earth King's great, 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 great grandfather. Oh boy. I had to count with my finger those many greats. That's one, two, three, four greats. Grandfather. Four greats. Yes. Amazing. So crazy. The Earth King basically told Kyoshi to end this rebellion by any means necessary and put the peasants back in their place. When Kyoshi refuses, the king becomes enraged and orders her arrest. After making quick work of the guards, Kyoshi gets in the king's face and pretty much tells him that he's making a compromise. Yeah, you're going to compromise and you're going to like it. Yes. Her words don't say that, but her, <laughs> her body language is like, this is what's happening, pal. Deal with it. Yeah. Kyoshi informs the king that she doesn't like the revolution any more than he does, but it is important that everyone in the city has a voice. She proposes that if the king listens to the peasants' grievances, she will protect the king and his interests, as well as Ba Sing Se's cultural heritage. The king reluctantly agrees. Kiyoshi immediately started training an elite force of earthbenders who would be silent, precise, and feared by all. In case you didn't connect the dots yet, that's right. You probably know it. Kiyoshi trained, created, and started the Dai Li. Dun, dun, dun. Bum, bum, bum. When Aang figures this out, Kiyoshi tells him that she thought she was doing the right thing by creating a group whose purpose was to protect their cultural history. She tells Aang that their actions always have an effect, sometimes positive and sometimes negative, and sometimes those effects do not occur for many lifetimes. She then helps the young airbender back onto Heibai and tells him that he must hurry and find the waterbender avatar who came before her. Avatar Kuru. Avatar Kurok. So excited. So <laughs> I feel like you might have already said in a bit of trivia that it was Kyoshi that trained the Daily. But there's something about hearing Acorn say it versus seeing it with your own eyes. Uh-huh. It's just like unbelievable. And like the the good intentions that went into creating this elite force. And they just are so easily swayed by anyone with like a very firm opinion. Mm -hmm. We're going to dive into that in our next episode yes. because we see what happens with the Dai Li mm -hmm. and how it affects Ba Sing Se. But mm -hmm. yeah, I know there's something to be said about even in this very simplistic, very minimally animated format. Yeah. There's something to be said about seeing it in front of you with your own eyes. Absolutely. Like 
we see old Ba Sing Se, we see the uprising, we see the king coming to Kyoshi for help and Kyoshi kicking butt and knocking out the guards and taking a stand and telling him what she wants and then see her training the Dai Li yeah. and then seeing what the Dai Li become with all of the knowledge that we have gained from this seasons. It gave me chills quite a few times. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's absolutely crazy. Aang and Heibai find themselves next in the realm of Ko and remain alert and cautious as they travel through the murky red swamp. Suddenly, Aang is set flying off the panda spirit by a man dressed in water tribe clothing. Aang mistakenly thinks that Ko replaced the man's face with that of a bear, but the man tells Aang to settle down and shows him that he's just wearing a bear hood. The man helps Aang up and introduces himself as Avatar Kurok and asks if Aang has seen a beautiful woman with long brown hair around here. The woman he's looking for is Kurok's wife. He goes on to tell Aang that when he was a young Avatar, he would travel the world and challenge other benders to a test of strength. He would go up to random civilians going about their day and just challenge them to random Agni Kais. I love that part. He's like, <laughs> you, Agni Kai, now. And this guy's like, I'm just going to the market. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so good. Kirk also had quite the way with the ladies and would use his bending to flirt with them. He, what he got like cherry <laughs> blossoms or something or lotus, lotus flowers, lotus flowers, and just like air bended them into a little like whirlwind and went up to like female air nomads, which is like, hey, ladies, you like this? Is this, <laughs> is this up your alley? Yeah, you yes, do. He yeah. Did. <laughs> it's, so it's even funnier because we saw Aang do this. He yeah. became a huge flirt when they oh, first went right. to Kyoshi Island. And even. We actually saw him doing the same air bending technique in yep. the episode Imprisoned when he created that air funnel to spit the coal yep. at the jailers. That's right. That's right. So it's cool to see the parallels to the episodes we've seen with Aang and how they strangely relate to some of the things that happened with his ancestors or it is, previous selves. It's wild. Like, I didn't make that connection until you just said that. Like, that is, he has these like subconscious just links to his past selves mm -hmm. that he doesn't even realize and we saw it also in um the kiyoshi island episode warriors of kiyoshi yeah. where he used uh, one of the fans and like immediately felt weird about it and kind of uh -huh. like ditched it so ugh, i love it yeah so good yeah Korok admits that he was arrogant proud and boastful and never thought about settling down until he met his wife they met during the new moon celebration and it was love at first sight. Oh, my gosh. I want to talk about the new moon celebration. Yes, please do. Because at this point, we are, let's do some rough math here. Mm -hmm. Let's say, I don't know for sure. Let's say Roku lived roughly 100 years. Yep. Then we have Kyoshi, who mm -hmm. lived 230 years. Mm -hmm. So this is over 300 years ago. So this is back when the Northern Water Tribe and the Southern Water Tribe were established. This is before they got wiped out, before the Hundred Year War, when their cultures were intact. The New Moon Celebration was an annual festival held between the Northern and Southern Water Tribes. It was a commemoration held to reunite the two polar water tribes because they essentially lived as separate cultures even then. The celebrations were seemingly scheduled to correspond with the New Moon. And it was said at one of these festivals that Kurok met the love of his life, Umi. Hmm. Kurok, by the way, is from the Northern Water Tribe. And Umi is from the mm -hmm. Southern Water Tribe, which I really like. That it gives it that whole like Romeo and Juliet kind of vibe, kind of, but like... A little bit, yeah. A little bit. <laughs> Just like our, our Sokka from the Southern Water yeah. Tribe and Yue from the Northern Water Tribe. What another absolutely crazy parallel. Uh-huh. Oh, man. Probably not coincidental at all. No, not at all. Especially with what happens to Umi later, which we'll get to in just a minute or two. Yes. But first, we have to talk about how, with Umi in his life, Kurok changed his ways and decided to settle down. The two were to be married at the Spirit Oasis, but during the ceremony, Umi was pulled into the pond of the Oasis by an unseen force. Kurok tells Aang that she was taken to the spirit world by Ko, who was punishing the Avatar for his past mistakes. Every year on their anniversary, Kirk would travel to the spirit world in hopes of saving his wife, but he failed. That's so sad. Again, something happened in the Northern Water Tribe, mm -hmm. got pulled into the spirit world where mm -hmm. she will stay forever. 
I think it's so sweet how Kurik refers to her as his wife. Yeah. Despite the fact that she was stolen by Ko before they even got married. Can you imagine how awkward that conversation is going to be where Kurik is just like, my wife! And Umi's like, mm, hold on a minute there. <laughs> we never went through with this. One second, mister. We never tied the knot officially. <laughs> and meanwhile, he's trying. he's been trying to save her for 300 plus years. Actually, that more is than that. also very sweet. 400 plus years because Aang went into the ice for 100 years. Oh, crap. I totally forgot about that. Yes. So <laughs> tack on another 100 years yes. to my math before. So for 400 plus years, Kuruk has been looking for Umi. That is one of the greatest love stories ever yeah. told. Yeah. Quick note yes. about Umi's name. Her name is similar to Umi, which in Japanese translates to the word sea. Hmm. S E A C, not the letter C, <laughs> or not S E E, like to look to see. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the ocean C. I see what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear everyone's eyeballs rolling right now, uh -huh. and I I feed off of it. It makes me yeah. stronger. <laughs> yes, you do. It's so <laughs> silly. All right, Eng looks to the side and knows exactly what it's like to fail his loved one. Suddenly, Aang remembers that he has seen a woman fitting that description back in the siege of the North Part 2. For anyone who wants to remember, we saw Ko. Yeah. The one and only time we really see Ko, I feel like. Or maybe we see him again after this. That is the first time we see Ko. That's the first yes. time we see Ko. Okay. The first time we see Ko, and he took on this face of Umi. Yeah. And surprisingly, Umi back then has brown eyes. Most of the Water Tribe members have blue so That's she true. was a little bit, a little bit different in that way. And we've talked about this before with the Fire Nation and how yeah. the Fire Nation typically has gold eyes, but for some reason, Ty Lee's family has like the grayish color, right? Yes. Yeah. Very more uh, Air Nomad-esque, which is very mm -hmm. interesting. Huh. So that either tells me that A, they didn't realize who Umi was at that point, which I don't know, it doesn't seem likely to me based on all these connections they're making. B... It was a misstep on the art department and they just mm -hmm. weren't paying attention, which maybe that happens sometimes when you're outsourcing a lot of the animation or there's something about Umi that we may never know. And it's all fan theories at that point. Yep. I personally like the third option, but yeah. I'm also just an addict of, <laughs> of lore and like theories and the yes. deeper meaning of things. Yes, for sure. For sure. But I honestly, my gut, I want it to be the third thing. My gut is telling me it was an art mistake that never got caught. Yeah, or just they thought that brown eyes seemed more kind and warm. Yeah. And that made sense in a love story with Kurok, who's, you know, this wild party boy. Yes, for sure. So Aang remembers that he's seen Umi, and he tells Kurok that Ko still has her in his lair. Kurok thanks Aang and tells him that he will keep hunting Ko until Umi is safe in his arms. As he runs away, he tells Aang that Avatar Yang Chen is waiting for him. I love this, by the way, that he's running away. He's like, oh, by the way, Aang Chen, go see your bye. <laughs> yep. We got a couple emails and I just want to bring this up right now before we move on to Yang Chen asking who our favorite avatars were. Mm -hmm. I feel like yours is Kiyoshi. Oh, I'm torn. I'm torn yeah. between Kiyoshi and Yang Chen, actually. Okay. okay. At the time when I answered the email, I said it was Ang because I had not met Kurok yet. Yeah. And now it's 100% Kurok. There's no no <laughs> doubt in my mind that it's anyone other than him. He is Ah, oh my God. So I'm not wonderful. surprised. He is like, yeah. what I like about him the most is the fact that he evolves as a character. He's not just mm -hmm. a womanizer for the rest of his life. He's just kind of a clown for a little bit. And then he like changes his ways. And now he is the most loyal monogamist to have ever done any sort of monogamy in the history of it all, in my opinion. 400 plus yeah. years? Crazy. I'm just going to throw it out there that Rory from Doctor Who was dedicated longer, but it, it's okay. In the world yeah. of Avatar, maybe. Okay, you're right. The second the most loyal centurion. monogamist to have ever <laughs> monogamied in the history of it all. <laughs> in Avatar, yes. Yes, in Avatar. Yeah, I absolutely. would agree with you there. Yeah. I just love that kind of character that's well, is very flawed, but is unaware of it until mm -hmm. he becomes aware of it and then works until to like fix a it. catalyst. Yes. yes. Until yes. something happens that completely shifts his perspective and makes him see the world in a different way. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. It's awesome. Oh, I take back what I said earlier. I think I am torn between Kyoshi and Roku. Okay. Only because I know more about their backstories. If I knew more about Yang Chen's, yep. I might change that answer. That's fair. I, I do like Roku too, especially after learning what we've learned about him in this episode. But yeah. still, Kuruk 100% 
by a land. And we're not talking about like 100 year war Patreon. Like, oh, it's just by one. No, it's like massive amounts of votes that is in my head. so funny to me because kirk is my least favorite avatar <laughs> that we know about <laughs> but who's surprised at this point no, no one. one absolutely no one ang finally finds avatar yang chen at the top of a mountain the former airbending avatar asks the current airbending avatar what he's learned from meeting his past lives and ang came to a very important conclusion no avatar is perfect they all struggled and made mistakes just as ang has and Korra will, because she's a main character. She's probably going to make mistakes. That's just what happens. Mm -hmm. Aang looks at Yang Chen and asks, why does the Avatar spirit inhabit a human in every life? And wouldn't it be better if it was just this all-powerful deity spirit that never died? Yang Chen looks at Aang and responds. This is directly, this is not paraphrase. I took this directly out of the script for it or the transcript because mm -hmm. I felt like it was very important. Oh, yeah. The Avatar must be compassionate towards all people and the only way to do that is to live with them. The Avatar must experience sadness, anger, joy, and happiness. By feeling all these emotions, it helps you understand how precious human life is, so you will do anything to protect it. If you were an all-powerful spirit living on top of some mountain, you wouldn't have much in common with an ordinary person. So the Avatar continues to take human rebirth, and with each life, learns what it means to be human that is so beautiful and such a great explanation yes and it, it also really explains like why it's a cycle of rebirth too not just you have to be a person you can't be an immortal person because then you'll become detached and you might as well just be an immortal spirit at that point living on top of a mountain you have to go through failure love loss all of that to really understand what it yeah. is to be human and ang in books one and two went through all of that Mm -hmm. And it's so great because in this scene, they flash back to those yep. moments of extreme emotion. When Avatar Yang Chen says sadness, we see Appa being yeah. kidnapped in the library. Yeah. When she says anger, we see Aang's attempt at mastering the Avatar state in Crossroads of Destiny. Mm -hmm. When she says joy, we see Aang and Katara penguin sledding together in The Boy and the Iceberg. And then when she says happiness, we see Team Avatar reuniting with Appa at the end of Lake Laogai. Yeah. All of which are super appropriate flashbacks to illustrate each emotion. And it really kind of drives in the point that in this journey so far, Aang has experienced so much as a person that's only going to make him stronger, not only as a person again, but also as an avatar. Yes. I would argue that they could have just shown all Appa clips. And that would have been also <laughs> relevant. Just saying. Yeah. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> Aang asks Yang Chen if the Avatar spirit will be okay now that he's reconnected with some of his past selves. He is told that while the Avatar spirit is just fine, his body is still injured and will need time to heal. She puts her hand on Aang's arrow tattoo on his head and both of their tattoos glow. She then tells Aang that it looks like his ability to enter the Avatar state has been disrupted and he won't be able to rely on his past lives to help him. Instead, he must now rely on his friends. Yang Chen informs Aang that he won't be able to remember this journey to the spirit world when he wakes up, and it will be like a long-forgotten dream. Yang Chen disappears, and Aang wakes up. The end. Couple things here. Yes. The whole, it was a dream the whole time yeah. is such an overused trope, but I think yep. it's very appropriate in this. Because of the Avatar element. Yes. But I, I also think that they weren't trying to trick us, too. Like, in those times no. where it was like, it was yeah. a dream, it would be like, we would be not seeing him in the spirit world or, like, you know, they would try to hide exactly. it in some way. Yeah. So, yeah. for me, yes, it's, like, similar to that trope, but it's so different and so useful. And the lore that they packed into this is just astounding. Oh, my God. It's priceless, really. We, we learned so much about the world in this what is it? Maybe 10 minutes tops? Like, like It was like 15 minutes, yeah. Like yeah, 10, 15, 15 minutes, minutes yeah. which is amazing. Yeah. Super well done, team. Yes. Another thing I want to bring up is mm -hmm. what Yang Chen says at the end of this. She tells him that while the Avatar state is fine, his body needs to heal and he'll have trouble going into the Avatar state. Yes. And she says that instead of being able to rely on his past selves, he'll need to rely on his friends. I want to bring this up because in book three, we do see him communicating with his past selves in spirit form. 
I think what Yang Chen is getting at here is he won't be able to draw on the strength of his past selves by accessing the avatar state. Mm -hmm. So he'll still have access to his past selves in spirit form to get advice, perspective, help, but accessing the all-powerful avatar abilities, that's going to be cut off from him. Yeah, that makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Since this is kind of like a normal episode, but not, do you want to go over your MVP? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Okay. MVP of Escape from the Spirit World. Yeah. They did such a good job creating an equal playing field for all of the avatars because Aang learned something different from each of them. Yeah. I'm going to have to give it to Aang because Aang went into this with a willingness to learn mm -hmm. and an openness of mind and really sought out lessons with each mm. of his past selves that he encountered. Also, we don't give MVP to Aang very often, so I want to That's give it true. to him this time. That's very true. Yeah, I feel like if Aang doesn't win the overall MVP for book three, people might riot. <laughs> I feel like, I don't know. Just I have a suspicion it's going to be him. I'm going to say Avatar Kuru, because he is my of favorite. Of course you are. He's uh -huh. my favorite, and he's so charming, and... <laughs> <laughs> he's so he's so dreamy and great i actually i spoiled something for myself i looked up because he does show up again we actually uh -huh. hear his voice and i was very curious to see who his voice was and it's jim meskimen which i can't tell if i'm liking that or not jim has done oh. multiple other voices in the past actually i forget which other hold on jim has voiced general Howe and a bunch of additional voices throughout oh right yeah so i can't tell and uh lieutenant g Okay. Our good old friend, Lieutenant G, who just has disappeared into yeah. the world of Avatar somewhere, never to be seen again. <laughs> he probably went home or something. He probably went home. Yeah, he just retired. He goes, all right, screw this. I'm going home. <laughs> so I can't tell if I'm going to like that or not. We'll see when the time comes when that episode shows up. Mm -hmm. I think the moral of the episode is very obvious because it all revolves around this. And for me, it's nobody's perfect. Yeah, definitely. And life's a journey. Life's a journey. Learn from it. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right. That is it for Escape from the Spirit World. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode of it. It was very, very informative for me. I've never seen this before. So watching it for the first time was very enlightening, very cool. And remember, if you're caught up on all the episodes and you're looking for something to do on a Monday or Friday evening, you can always join me over at twitch.tv slash booster greg at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Unless... It's the last Friday of the month, and then we'll be at twitch.tv slash the geek generation <laughs> for Avatar. Oh boy. Oh boy, it's so great. And you can also find me on Twitter, uh, the YouTubes, all of the places. Awesome. And I'm Acorn Bandit. You can find me online at Acorn Bandit and also on joysons.com. J O I S A N S.com. Don't forget the S. I'm going to say that every time now. <laughs> Every time. Uh -huh. And now you can find me on the Geek Generation every last Friday of the month. Yes. On App Talk. Yes. All right. Coming up next time. The beginning of book three. All this and more next time on Avatar, Avatar the, the podcast. podcast. Avatar, the podcast, is a proud part of the Geek Generation Network. Remember to check out all of our podcasts at thegeekgeneration.com. 